Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at how we're making a robot for a code pen feature. Let's go to code pen now. So code pen can be found at codepen.io, and we are Zim.js on the end of that. We're now making a robot. It's for patterns. So what we're planning on doing is putting patterns uh, down the right-hand side, and we can drop them on any part of the robot to add the pattern to the robot. But to make the robot shapes, we put a grid in right here. We've added a grid. Oh, why don't we turn down the music? Does that make sense? <laughs> Uh, there we go. So we put a grid in here, a new grid, and we're, we've added it to the bot container. So here's the bot container outlined in red. We, well, I'm not sure what that is. That might be the color of the grid. We just left it the default color and we've turned uh, off the percent. So percent is default true, uh, but here we've turned the percent false to all of these because we're dealing with pixels rather than percent. Often the grids and guides are used when uh, working with responsive design and percents make sense. But here we're actually laying out based on pixels. So the grid, why don't we step through this, comment that out, and run the pen. The grid shows us an X across the top. So as we move our cursor, we get an X and a Y going down. And so there's the Y, 700 by 188. The robot's primarily centered, uh, although sometimes we have to go off to the edges. If you don't have a lot of movement, you can always use place. Place works pretty well, but the robot is more, mm, I don't know, everything is centered on itself and uh, symmetrical so place might still cause some problems we can't drag and drop with absolute accuracy but if you wanted to just drag and drop something into a position then place works better we hardly ever use grid and guide anymore but this would be an example of when we could uh, what we've decided to do is we sketched out our bot and we brought in the sketch as an asset so up here it's robot.jpg we can upload assets to CodePen and they give us the directory that those are in. So there's the path to our assets. We're also bringing in a custom font uh, in that assets as well. So um, now we've been making these things and uh, the shapes. And what the plan is, is to make the shapes, add them to the robot, and then duplicate all the shapes with an outline and put all the duplicates at the back. And then we're going to have the patterns be masked by the shape without the outline, but the outlined shape would be in behind it. So we'd end up with kind of like an out, a proper outline for our patterns. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, just because if you mask something, the outline will also be used as the mask. And therefore, we're not gonna have an outline. So we're gonna put the outlines all behind it and that has a neat effect as well where you don't see the outline come and cut through places well I mean you might like so for instance this shoulder right here if we put the outline on the shoulder but the circles in behind we're gonna see the outline of the the shoulder come across and I don't think we want we're gonna want that so we want the outline of the shoulder coming down and hitting the circle but then moving along the circle and moving along the arm etc so now we're going to end up an outline of the whole bot rather than the outline of the, the eye the outline of this etc so i think that'll be fine the eyes we're going to keep just one color we're not going to let people pattern the eyes we're not going to let people pattern the hands or the feet i think so it's just the um, all the rest of it i guess can be patterned and we're also thinking of moving the eyes so that the eyes kind of follow where your cursor is as you're dragging and dropping patterns onto that. That would be cute. It would be pretty easy to do. Uh, basically, I think I, I think the whole eyeball, uh, there, there, there's no pupil. 
I don't think anyway. And we're just going to slide the eye. So it, this eye will slide to here if, if we're way over here. But as we approach here, the eye will slide out. And it will be just a, a proportion damp based on the um, position of the cursor and the start and stop of the um, where we want to slide the eye to. But this explore is more uh, how are we putting these shapes into these into these places. So say now the, the next shapes I, I guess would be the legs because what we're wanting to make sure is if we don't want to necessarily line the shapes up exactly. You see that the circle isn't well, we're cutting off the circle here. This uh, the head might be up too high on the helmet, etc. So we're building them in a stacking order. This the neck is behind the head, or face the head, I guess, is behind the helmet. So that if the head's too high, the helmet will cover it, and that will be fine. So with the legs, we're going to want to put the legs underneath the um, uh, what do we call that? The skirt, <laughs> whatever. It's kind kind of a skirt, I guess. Um, so the legs will come next and then the feet are going to go on top of the legs and, and we still have the hands to do as well. But why don't we do a leg? So for, for finding out how high that is, we could try and calculate it from the grid. But first of all, it may not lay nicely on the grid. I mean, we can, we can take the Y and, and move the Y. You see the Y there it says 490, 490, 489. And we come on down to the bottom and 688, but then we have to subtract those two numbers to get the height of the, well, we have to subtract the first number from the second number to get the, the height of the leg. So what we then realize is, okay, well, wait a minute, we could make a guide here. And one of these, let's see, that's, I, I can't remember which vertical true, that's a vertical guide probably. So if I comment that out and run it, we should get the guide that we want to use now. So this is a guide and it's sort of strange. You might be thinking, well, don't we need two guides? One to place there and one to place there. Well, no, what we do is we place the guide like so, and then we move our cursor. And this guide is pink. So look at the pink number here. So we're moving our cursor. I go down to the bottom and look, the, the number says 198. So basically, there it is, zero, or, well, lower number, right? And as we go farther away from it, that's telling us how far away, we could even call that 200. So basically, the height of the uh, leg is 200. What about the width of the leg? Well, that's this other guide right here. So we bring in the other guide and run it. Well, we had these running all along. I was just wanting to show you it in little bits. So here's the other guide. I move it to the edge. It doesn't really matter which edge I move it to, but I move it to the edge of the leg. And then I move my cursor to the other leg and it tells me 62. So it was a 62 by, I can't remember. <laughs> I have to move that one because well, I restarted it. All right. So now we're good. We've got all the stuff that we want in here. We're not going to have to keep on refreshing. But that says uh, basically 200 by Oh, well, sorry, 65, I guess, by 200. Okay, so now we come into here and we'll make a leg. So this is leg one, and it's going to be a new rectangle. Darn, I can't remember. 62, I think we said. And was it just 200? 200. Uh, the corner, so the corner is zero, zero zero and then probably I don't know 30 or something like that or 40. So zero, 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 30 or 40 as that comes in. We'll try 40. What's the width? Yeah, 40. Okay, and now we have to position it. So basically since it's a rectangle it will be um, let well we'll position we may as well position the left of it and then the top of it like that. Some of these other ones that are more centered, we're positioning it from the center of zero. So you see how up here we're positioning it zero from the center and 52 from the top. Well, I knew it was 52 from the top because I'm looking at this Y right here. There, that's the helmet. It looks, uh, nope, that's going to be the rectangle of the head right here. Is See that? 52 right there or whatever, wherever 52 is. Okay, so that's telling me the top, and then I'm centering that. But for the leg, 
I'm going to want, uh, it looks like about right there, I'm going to want 100 over, and it looks like, does that say 480? The, the, it's unfortunately it's right on the grid so if I move the grid I can see that better 492 uh, so 492 or we'll call it 490 and 100 so 100 and 490 and this is the leg 100 is the X and 490 is the Y 490 is the Y and this is from the left top okay and we're um, putting this on bot. Bot is the robot. <laughs> I realize it's the bottom, but bot is the robot. So I save that and I run it. We have look. And uh, there we go. So it looks like we could shift it over a bit. So we missed we missed its uh, left by a little bit. I think I was <laughs> I was hoping that it was 100. 100 sounds nice, uh, but that could maybe be 104. Now let's try that again. Uh, it could probably be 105 and we get away with it. This is, uh, you know, uh, the, the sketch doesn't totally, totally matter. Uh, we could decide to make it change. For instance, these legs might not actually be the same uh, width. We might want to make this a little bit wider and we'll try that. So a little bit wider with 65 and that will probably do it. Now what we're going to do is copy this. So we copy that leg, we call it leg two. And uh, the leg two, well, it would be the same from the right. So you see how we've got a certain amount from the left. If we wanted this to be symmetrical, then we should go the same amount from the right. So I say right, cool, huh? But this guy's in the wrong place. So uh, this goes in here. So 40, it, now it will be zero corner here, zero corner here, 40 corner here, and then zero corner. And we save this up and run. And now we have a second leg. Um, great, huh? Now we can put this one on there. But I think, I think you get the same idea. So what we're going to do is go through the process of uh, mapping that. Do you want to do one more with me? In this explorer, that's all. It's going to be a short explorer. I was just uh, in the process of doing this, and this might be something that you wouldn't expect to know how to do or expect Zim to know how to do. Um, but we don't build with a visual editor. Uh, the other way to the other way to go with this would just be to throw like we could actually build this as a collage using. Um, using the transform. So watch this. It would be something like new rectangle dot center dot transform. I suppose we should center it on the bot at least. Okay, so there we go. We run it. Well, this is after the style, so I think this will be a black rectangle. So there it is, and I could, if I were only using rectangles, uh, unfortunately, there's the corner involved here, which is one reason we, we didn't do it this way. But there, I just made a rectangle in the right place. I suppose there might be some way that we could just position everything and then add the corners after. Uh, yeah, but because, we're because we use the scale on that, it's going to make a mess out of corners, basically. I mean, we could just put all the same corner and then it doesn't really matter as, as we scale that thing. And then it's just one step, one step more. We'll remember the positions of all this. And then we can also say whatever it is, uh, show colon false or display colon false. I can't remember. Display. Uh, so once there, once everything is made, I don't think it's display colon false. I can't remember. Oh, uh, and we didn't set the save on that. But there, there's one step. It's called a transform manager. And we just pass an ID into the transform manager. Next time this loads, it, oh, that won't work because that's for each person. So that would work for me because I have all that stuff remembered in local storage. But then uh, other people looking at it don't have my local storage, so they wouldn't know where all those things were transformed to. So that works if you're making your own collage and you want to see it again and, and save it. 
Um, you can also grab the data. I guess that's what we would need to do. We'd need to grab the data from that, which you can do, and then um, uh, use that data to build those things to start. So that that's as close as you would get to having a WYSIWYG editor, like uh, you know Photoshop or what Flash did, where you could take things, put them on the stage, and transform them, and then they were saved like that. Like we're we're very close to that. We could do that too. It's just we don't want to. So Zim has decided that we don't want a visual editor. <laughs> this is as far as far as we're going. We don't want to try and remake Flash with a visual editor. You guys can if you want. Somebody can out there can do that. We started and just changed our mind and said, nah, let's keep it completely code based. Otherwise, we run the risk of being perceived as Flash or a Flash wannabe. And also, Flash had teams of, you know, hundreds of, of uh, engineers working on the Flash IDE. <laughs> uh, we, we have the advantage, maybe, of remaking that kind of stuff in a simple way that is for mobile ready. And that's, you know, we were thinking about it, but just decided, no, let's make it code based. We never really spent that long in the editor when we were building in Flash anyway. Professionals or people who are coding didn't really use that all that much. It was a convenience, but I'm going to make this robot in, I don't know, half an hour maybe. And I would have made the robot in 15 minutes or 20 minutes. If, if And so that's a difference of 10 minutes on something that I hardly ever do this kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, so uh, there you go. If you want, you can make this in Flash and then bring the whole thing in and, and we can grab the pieces of it. That, that might have worked too. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I could have uh, built this in Flash instead of spending half an hour. I could have spent 20 minutes building it in Flash and, and then bring in the, the parts like ha export from animate or just sort of control enter from animate. And then we can bring those parts in and we can use those in the same way, in, in a similar way. And we still have a little bit of tricks that we apply to zimify those, zimify those shapes. Or there's a thing called, uh, what was it? I can't even remember, some sort of vector container system that we did. You can look those up. Uh, but we haven't done those in a, a long time. And that just means that we really don't need it. <laughs> it doesn't usually come up. <laughs> and the things that, that I build anyway, it just doesn't usually come up. So it's just not worth it to try and build an IDE for something that it, with a little bit of work, Zim is so easy to work with when it comes to making shapes that, uh, you know, the, just put a circle on there, put a radius on it, and there you go. All right, anyway, for vector, for vector shapes too, we've got like if we had unusual shapes rather than circles and rectangles here, then we've got blobs and squiggles. And those blobs and squiggles, you can use path four. You know what that is, right? So this is pizzazz. I'm going to be using pizzazz for uh, for the patterns. Pizzazz three for the patterns. Pizzazz four is this thing right here. So let's go to Zim and under code, under libraries. The, here are the pizzazz libraries. So there's a set of vector paths that were made, actually. These, these vector paths were made in Animate, but then we brought the code in from Animate into Zim, right, right into pizzazz, and said, okay, if you, and, and this was as well. So these, all, all these vector shapes were, were built in Animate, and then just brought the code for it, was brought in, and we stored them in a pizzazz folder. So we were trying to do this to show you that it's really easy to do that kind of stuff. Uh, you're welcome to make more icons and store those yourselves and add them onto this library, make your own version of the library or just use those own patterns. This one is what we're using for patterns. Uh, if we click there, I can show you, I think this will take you to an example. All right, so these are the patterns that will be on the robot. We're also going to let them change the color of the patterns, or at least a two-tone version of them. And then this, this pizzazz is a little bit different where we take you to an editor of various shapes. So if you want unusual shapes, and you can fill this in any way, then you can grab the code for that and just add that to a blob. So this code gets added as the points to a blob. And you got that shape. 
this is way easier than exporting from animate a shape and blah 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 not only that you end up with a blob that the user if you want the user to be able to you end up with a blob that the user can edit themselves you also end up with a blob or a squiggle that um that you can animate along and, and drag things along so uh, that's still editable by the user <laughs> so that's that's better than a vector that is coming from animate. A blob and a squiggle for an unusual shape. And by the way, you can also make circles and squares and triangles with this. You just pass in for the points a circle and it'll make a circle that then you can let the user animate along, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, that's sort of the Zim system and yet it's all still in code. Yeah, okay, this is this is an online editor, I know, we're grabbing the code from it, but that's that's really, uh, this is for changing the shape of something, you know, which, which you could, <laughs> of course, you could, you could put your own code in there and figure it out, <laughs> but I think it's easier to figure this stuff out with a visual editor, <laughs> all right? X and Y is not, you know, that's not as hard, right? X and Y is you can position something and just change the X and Y or use place as mentioned. Place is almost, place, hey, there you go. Where do you want it? And you can visually place it and then it gives you the code and you just put that in the X and Y. So that's as far as we've gone. We've added those uh, efficiencies for you in Zim, but you don't have the clunk of an editor. Uh, many people, you have to learn how to use that still, right? Uh, sorry, I'm saying right. Uh, you have to learn how to use an editor as well, as well as learning how to code. Here, we're learning how to code and you just do everything in code, aside from a few little tweaks here that are much easier to do, okay? So that's how, that's how we've arranged things. So we were going to do one more together. Mm, that's the transform. Let's try it out. Oh, and by the way, what I'm doing as well as I place this, it helps to have the alpha down so that I can see things a little bit easier where, where things overlap and, and stuff. So uh, instead of applying the alpha in our circle and rectangles that we made, we set a style of an alpha of 0.5 right there. We could change that to 0.2 and run it. And now it's even uh, fainter there. And this is what it would look like with an alpha of one. So if we didn't run this style uh, as we're building, this is what we would see. It's just a little bit harder to see where things are aligning. Well, it's a lot harder to see where things are aligning. In the end, this will be sort of what the background looks like, but then uh, you'll have in here a pattern thing. So uh, have a look on CodePen uh, in Zim or in the Zim examples in the future. You'll probably see this and we'll probably put a link to it in the, uh, the YouTube video as well. And so uh, this has been a Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. I hope, uh, oh, we were going to do one more, weren't we, though? Ah, well, just go look at how we did the first one again, if you want to see that again. It's good enough. I then started rambling on other options and stuff, so why don't we just leave it at that? Okay, I'm Dr. Abstract. Uh, as, a, as I mentioned, this has been a Zim Explorer. Uh, have, a, have a good day or night. Come join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to hear from you. Cheers.